work. Let's go to our slide. And this is the last in the series, Grow, that I'm doing. Today's lesson is entitled, Grow Your Blessings. Say that. My scripture reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter number 34, verse 26. And I will make them and the places around about my hill a blessing. I will make them a blessing and everything around you a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. Say that. And the tree of the field shall yield a fruit, and the earth shall yield an increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord. When I've broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that survived themselves of them. There's a ring in the sound. There are 12 hours of things to do to grow your blessing. And here's the list. Here's the list. Responsibility. Reputation. Reserves. Record. That's recording your life where you were last year, Esther, where you plan to be next year. Your track record. Record keeping. Rank and or ranking. How have you ranked your performance this year? Evaluation. Riches. How to grow riches. Revenue. What is revenue? how to expand it, revelation knowledge, how to increase it, reach, that means reaching for those things that are far, reach, I was watching Eden the other day, reaching for stuff, and so she couldn't reach, so she got a few pots, I don't I have no idea how she figured that out, a couple of pots and a dish to reach something she was not supposed to have. Research, and then lastly, Recreation, retreat and recreation. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look like you need a break, brah. <laughs> ah. ah, some of you look so busted up, you, you need a break. Ah, say, ah, I need a break. Ah, most of you don't say, ah, I need a break. Ah, those years that have been sleeping all year, you need to wake up. And so let's look at responsibility. Grow your responsibility. Responsibility is given to you. If you are responsible with a little, much will be added. If you are responsible with someone else's, something else will be given to you even more. In a brief discussion the other day, uh, there was someone who had a house come open and a name was recommended and there was a unanimous, no, 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 no. And the deal was the place where the person was before, they trashed that house. They were given a house, fully furnished, they trashed that house. Why in the world would you want to give them another one to trash? Amen. And so if you trash one place, it's likely you're going to trash another place because you don't have to take responsibility. Responsibility then is a sign of maturity. Maturity is measured sometimes by how much responsibility a person is given. So I met a guy in Zambia yesterday, the day before yesterday, a very young man with great responsibility, uh, which was quite stunning, that he was given such responsibility even in terms of governmental secrets on a high and top level. And so uh, this kind of responsibility uh, is conferred, it's given. So when God gives you something, he wants you to be responsible for what he has given. 
so you are responsible for your actions. Don't blame someone else. So don't say the devil made me do it. Don't say the devil made me do it. Don't say it's a generational curse. It's my great great grandfather that made me have six children with 50 women. You are responsible for your actions. You are responsible for your well being. You are who you are. Stops right here. The spoon stops here. Yeah, you see here? Yeah, yeah. The spoon stops here. Your hand didn't make you eat it. The pot didn't make you cook it. The meat didn't make you buy it. The cream didn't make you sip it. You are responsible for your well-being. Exercise, yada, yada. You are responsible for your family. If you are a family man, family woman, raise your hand. You are responsible for your family. How many of you have children that are five years and under? Raise your hand. You are responsible for their school fees. Don't borrow money for school fees. When you were older, he, 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 nine months, eh, from that moment you are responsible for school fees. <laughs> it takes at least $150,000 to get your children to university, and then depending on which varsity you want them to be. You are responsible for them. So you work now, you play later. You are responsible for your family's well-being, security, health, their feeding, their medical, insurance, all of those things, you are responsible for it. You are responsible for your property. Get some. You are responsible for it. Your goat, your cows, whatever property of your clothes, your shoes, you are responsible for your movable and immovable assets. If you have been blessed with something, Look after it. A lot of times we don't know the value of what we have been given. It might help if we understand something that's been given the value it is. You are responsible for your personal development. So there's so many folks, I was asking this morning a couple of people, you know what they do doing next year, and I was so happy to hear that a couple of them said, we're going back to school, so I'm also going back to school. I'm going back to school. You're responsible for your development in all kinds of ways. You're responsible for your progress. You are responsible for the spiritual atmosphere over you. You are responsible for that. If there's a demon in your house, don't sleep with it. Or don't sleep in the house with the demon there. And for some, don't sleep with it. Use oil, the blood of Jesus, prayers. Get to Nasha to sleep by the gate, amen. Get Zaf to sit on the roof. Get my Mazinga to make declarations, where are you? Amen. Get Magi Chaboko to come and curse those things. Praise God, I think I just gave you a job. Number two, you are responsible for your reputation. Grow your reputation. A reputation must be built. You build a reputation. And so there's a couple of people that did some work for us last year and the year before. I cannot recommend them over this pulpit to do work. Because they have not built their reputation in that field. But there was somebody we needed because we had an electrical problem. And Diana said to me, to Cheech, she said, there's somebody here, I recommend this person because they've done work year, 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 and the work has been excellent. Or stay away from that person. They're not reliable. And so a good reputation is built. So here are ways to grow a, a good reputation. Stay balanced. Don't be flaky. Be on time. Stay focused. Be honest. Be truthful. Stay positively consistent. All of those things are important for a good reputation. I remember James Kilgore, the assistant superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church. He was a smaller man, and uh, so uh, he wasn't a loud power preacher, which the UPC was known for, but there was a testimony given of Brother Kilgore. James is a small man. He might not be able to preach well, 
but you can trust him. He is a good man, and he built one of the largest churches in the UPC ever, only on his reputation, not on his preaching, on his reputation. A good business is built on a good reputation. There are some products we don't touch because we know the cocoa is always sour. Protect your reputation. Remember, who you hang out with is who you are. I'm not hanging out with Bob Marley. I'm not hanging out with Bob. I'm not hanging out with people. Uh, I'm not. Amen. Are you going to see me with, with, with Snoop Dogg? I'm not hanging out with Snoop. I'm not hanging out with Ja. So hang out with yourself if there's nobody to hang out with. Because you are birds of a feather flock to gather. Grow your reserves. Okay, so the way you grow your reserves is there's seed time and there's harvest. There's sowing and reaping. There's highs and lows, there's much and there's little. Therefore, study the ant. The ant stores. And so in times of abundance, you grow your reserves. And so create a seed bank. Create a seed bank. So I know what I give every Sunday, and I know what percentage we put away from all our earnings. That's savings. But I hadn't heard of a seed bank. I learned that a couple of weeks ago when we were in Zambia. A bishop was sharing, and he said uh, he went to a conference and he didn't have any money on him to give in the offering. But years ago, the Lord had given him instruction to develop a seed bank. And so he takes money, not his own money, money from, that he's generated, and puts it into sep a separate account in an account called a seed bank. So that if by accident or by perchance he finds himself in a meeting and they need an offering, he can draw money from his seed bank. I thought that was great. So in 2024, I'm developing a seed bank. Not my daily, weekly offerings, none of that. A separate seed bank so I can sow a seed to Chimukopa. I can sow a seed to somebody that's not well. I can sow a seed to a family that's in bereavement. I can sow a seed to that lady over there that's having triplets. Amen. She's going to need three sets of diapers. Three bottles, six bottles. I don't know how she's going to feed three. I'll just leave it there. And so you develop a seed, create a seed system. Develop a storage system. Silo system. Joseph did that. Always live within your means. Say that again. Say that again. I saw a guy with an expensive Mercedes Benz the other day pull up at a garage and said to the guy, put $5. <laughs> so I knew this is not his car, or he just scaled this, this item here. Uh, and then when he smiled, I could see it wasn't his car. It's not usual. Live within your means. Turn to your neighbor and say, your time will come. No, 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 sure. Your time will come. If you're building a house, and listen, we're on the other side of children. And so if you're building a house, I don't know why people are building three, four, five-story houses with teenage children. I, I don't know. He's like, I, I don't know. Practice a lifestyle adjustment in tough seasons. And so adjust, adjust, adjust your lifestyle. You're not going to die if you, if you can't have pizza every day. Chichi's threatening me with pizza for lunch. Can you believe it? Adjust your lifestyle. Say that. Now, Chichi and I were rolling with some folks some years ago. And uh, so 
where they were getting off. In, in fact, where they were starting. That's where we had ended. Because the shop they went in, we were shopping for $90 suits. They were starting at $6,500 a suit. Well, you, I'm out the game. I'm not going to get in school at just to, uh, you know, I'm out the game. And so, uh, if they're wearing those suits and I'm walking along with them, everybody thinks that. <laughs> they don't know that my suit is $99. They think that, hey, Tudor's rolling with the $6,000 suit guys. And so again, adjust. And again, do not borrow money for meaningless things. Everyone say, grow reserves. Because the interest will chew your lunch. Grow your record. Your track record must be monitored. List your wins for the year or the decade. Have you rated yourself for 2023? And so every e evening when I jump out of the shower, I stand on the scale. And if I'm over a certain weight, I don't eat for a year. I run to Marondera and back. I sit in the sun and melt. Because at 67 next year, it's going to take years and years to get over this. You see this, 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 this thing, this thing bothering me, this thing, this, this tire. It's going to take me years to get this off. And these things have a habit of growing. They grow triplets. You wake up in the morning, it's at a baby. <laughs> Have you got a, whatever, whatever. Create, you know, I, I, we need to, uh, teacher, we need to fix our CV. You know, Madam Chair was asking for us, for our CVs. You know, we need to get our curriculum vitae together. We need to resume resume. We need somebody to help us get our CV together. And we need them to explain what that actually means. Because I think we are qualified. Or we might even not be qualified for standing here. So we need, we need to get our CV from the Scanlon holders' years, the convent girls' years, and so on and so forth. I married a nun. <laughs> so get your CV together. Who does not have a CV? We are the only ones, Chichi. <laughs> no, serious. Who doesn't have a CV and needs one? <sighs> you have a CV? I'm the only one that doesn't have a CV. <laughs> I'm leaving the church. I need holy water. Hail Mary, full of grace. Amen. I'm such a disgrace. Please invite me to your bright place. <laughs> All right. Uh, Frank Rudolph, can I please make an appointment to see you this week to help me with my CV? He doesn't even want to help me with my CV. Frank Rudolph, I'm asking you over the pulpit. Can I make an appointment so you can help with my CV? Is that a yes? Is that, oh my God. Compare your journal entries from what you did last year, this time, to this year. Who keeps a journal? Raise your hand. Who does not keep a journal? Raise your hand. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Gigi, do you keep a journal? Oh, of course, amen. So we are together now. One, 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 one. We're going to extra time now. We're going to extra time. Amen. Amen. We'll see who's the best man. <laughs> and so journal entries are important so that you have a track record of your life. It really, really does help. I think I have like 27, 25 years. Protect uh, number, slide number eight. Hurry up, Judah. Grow your record keeping. Do you have a filing system? Where do you keep receipts, papers, uh, car registration books? Uh, where do you keep electricity bills, uh, water bills? The rates and taxes books come once every five years. They come once every five years and they charge you 325 million, 20 billion thousand dollars. 
So where do you keep your, your paperwork, your certificates, marriage, special photographs? A family friend of ours, their house caught on fire in the U.S., and they lost everything with no duplicates. And so if you have pictures, photographs that are very sentimental, there's a place right here in Newlands. Upstairs is a great law firm. I won't mention it's Phillips Law. But right downstairs, there's a place that does photographs. They'll duplicate your stuff and even frame it for you. They'll digitalize it for you because those things cannot be replaced if destroyed. Are we tracking everybody? Do you have a paper trail for your transactions? A paper trail is important. Do you have a priority system for your documents? Do you have a fireproof, floodproof, theft-proof system? This is so important. So important. Uh, you don't have to be carrying in your handbag your whole life story, your stupa, your birth certificate, your marriage certificate. No, 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 no. You must have a place because if somebody grabs your bag, it'd rather be empty than for you to be empty. Recommendations. Protect individual documents with duplicates. Create individual files. Develop, a sealed, develop sealed marked boxes. Make sure you put your stuff in filing cabinets. Uh, find a responsible friend that may have those facilities can, that can take care of stuff like that. Have a safety deposit box system if you need one. Have a safe somewhere. Have a friend that may have some of those facilities, maybe a bank or so on, so that your documentation is protected. Where do you keep your medical records? Who keeps those for you? And then, how do you grow your blessing? By growing your rank. Well, how do you grow your rank? You develop, have you developed adequately your life for promotion? So you promote yourself. You promote yourself by doing things, reading more, learning more, back in school more. I think we had so many wins this year. Tendai in our church in finance got a master's, just graduated. Wadza graduated master's, Primrose master's. Amen. I'm Master Bismarck and others. <laughs> Amen. Don't play with my PhD self. And so again, uh, you have to develop yourself to be promoted because you get more. So rate your performance. So in golf, for example, you have a handicap. So I met a brother in our church this week. He told me he plays golf every day. Lucky man. And so they work from five to, to one o'clock every day. And then in the afternoon, him and his wife, they go play golf. And so she's at a 20 handicap. He's at an eight handicap whatever that means in some world. In other words, uh, it's, it's a rating system. It's a rating system for performance in a ranking world. In sport, what league are you in? In law, what level are you in? As a doctor, uh, there's this guy in South Africa that was doing operations, he wasn't a doctor, but he had 10 years of successful surgery. That doesn't make him a doctor. And so there are levels. And so if I want to see uh, Auburn Powers, who went to school with Chichi, even if they went to school together, Chichi can't just go and say, Auburn, can I see you? No. You have to get a later from somebody that started here, a GP, your general practitioner. And you've got to take your general practitioner's recommendation. The re recommendation will go then to a specialist. And the specialist will then look at the recommendation from a, a doctor who's a GP. And the GP will say, this is out of my level. You are a specialist. I assume this person has a kidney problem. So please, can you help them? Because I think they might be suffering with renal failure. And they'd all say, oh, no, 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 no. Something wrong with you. So they are ranked. I have to refer you to Professor so-and-so and such-and-such and so-and-so and such-and-such. And so -and -so and such -and -such. Who did this 25 years ago? Who's doing this? We got uh, Dr. Makanza here somewhere. She's a, a renal specialist. Was a doctor for years for Bernstein. And now he's dealing with a small little organ called a kidney. 
And then it even gets worse where people now, they, they, spe they specialize, you have 10 toes. They specialize on one toe, the baby toe. The same is in music. You start as grade eight, grade seven, all the way. The same in school. Same in school. I met a child, a genius child, 12 years old, that was first year university in the States. Breezed through junior school, breezed through high school, and at the age of 12 was first year university. That's not the rule. Grow your riches. And so the Bible says when, when Solomon prayed, he asked for wisdom and understanding. And God increased his riches. Because God increased his riches, all of his constituents, their riches were increased. The principle is, once a person that is ahead or the head gets a blessing, it influences all those around them. So he prayed for wisdom and understanding. And with that, God gave him riches and peace. All of the people in his kingdom increased in wisdom. And all of them increased in riches and wealth. And so when you pray for wisdom, the Bible says wisdom pays handsomely. It's better than silver and gold. And this scripture is in Proverbs 13 verse 13. 3 verse 13, Proverbs 8 verse 8, riches and honor are with me. When you ask God to grow and expand your riches, Proverbs 11 verse 6, a gracious woman retains honor, a strong man retains riches. I don't want to explain. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wealth. Praise ye the Lord, Psalm 112.1. The man that fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments, wealth and riches shall be in his house. So if you respect God, you fear God, you will attract wealth and riches in your house. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, Proverbs 10.22, and he adds no sorrow with it. And so you seek his blessing. Somebody say amen. amen. Number seven, growing riches. Pastor Chiji said it. If you give, what happens? If you give, uh, good morning, everybody. If you give, it shall be given back to you. If you give, if you give, if you give, if you give, if you give nothing, you are going to get nothing. Nothing gives back to you. And so when I landed in Lusaka last week, and then this week with Chami, the minute I got off the plane, I said to the city of Lusaka, yield your increase. I've been sent here apostolically. Yield your increase. There'll be no tragedy. There'll be no mishap. I won't go to hospital. No high blood pressure, no hypertension, no losing my mind. Lusaka, give me your best. Yield your increase. It will obey your voice. It will obey your voice. Your neighborhood must yield its increase. I need a good shout from somebody. And then the measure will be given to you what you measure. We've done that before. Grow your revenue. Revenue is the total amount of income generated by the sale of goods and services. So I pray that what you are selling, whatever it is, will increase so your cash flow, your revenues will increase. See, if you have a lot of revenue flowing, you can go to a massive outlet and buy thousands of one product and drive the price down and still make a profit. Whereas if you're a handful of dollars, you are going somewhere and you are buying something that someone bought from somewhere that's put the price up. I'm calling for revenue increase. I'm calling for cash flow in this place. Amen. Both revenue and net income are useful in determining the, the financial strength of a company. And so your revenue increase, your net income has got to increase. Shout, it's got to grow. Shout, it's got to grow. 
Okay, when we're dealing with stuff like this, uh, I'll get to it in a minute. L let me move on. I don't want to get sidetracked. Revenue is the total amount of money and entity earns from a variety of sources. Everyone say a variety of sources. Right. Say a variety of sources. Right. Say a variety of sources. Right. Say many baskets. Right. Say many baskets. Right. Need many eggs. Right. One basket, right. not good enough for all the eggs. And so you need many baskets, many baskets. So there's a variety because at certain times there is a demand for certain things. Price goes up when there's demand for certain things and supply is short. And then there's times when the supply is so much and the price is no, low. And so I did a, a wedding for some Hindu people in Blay, some of one of my dad's old friends, he knew them from his band years. And so I went and I did the wedding and there was no cost. I said, I don't charge. And so he said to my dad, Bunny, what's wrong with your youngster? He doesn't charge. He says, that's why he's a pastor. He's got nothing. So my father said, no, it doesn't work like that. that uh, he said, well, let me give you something. I know, Bunny, you have in a conference. Don't worry. He went and he opened his, he had two garages, huge garages. I thought there were cars in there. He opened the one garage. It was a double door. And then he built it deep, like from here to where the sound desk is, double door. And from the top, top to the bottom were onions. And this was in the month of July. And he said to me, he said to me, he said to my dad, he said, you know what I do, Bernie? He said, when there's plenty of onions, I buy them for nothing. And then I stack them in this freezer of mine. Then when the onions are scarce, I hit them a hundred times more. Gave my dad several pockets of onions. He then went and he did the same year, opened. Shamari, potatoes. He says, when people are throwing potatoes away at the cost so low, I'm packing them in this freezer here. That when the potatoes are needed, Helen's cousin, they sell them and they put up the price. I pray that God gives you that kind of wisdom. And the space to manage that kind of wisdom. How many of the bend down people are here? Bend down people. Bend down. Did you raise your hand? Amen. I won't say where the other ones are this side here. Amen. Number nine. Let's go. Increase your knowledge. Grow your knowledge. Your revelation. Grow it. Grow your revelation knowledge. I learned a word this morning called a riz. It said if, they, if, they, if you are now called, if they say, Alice, you're riz, you're riz, it means like you. <laughs> hey, that's a nice word. So how did it come up? It came up through the Taylor Swift world. You know, she was at something and uh, Taylor said, whoa, you're riz. So now everyone's like, And to marry your riz. Turn to your neighbor saying, mm, you need a mm. <laughs> And so revelation knowledge then, you must increase it because the world is increasing. Revelation is moving so quickly it must come into your head. You can't live in the 21st century without revelation knowledge. You must grow your reach. Reach. You must grow your reach. Don't be linear. Reach beyond the borders. Reach beyond your family. Fish in another pond. I'm talking about products. Amen. You got one wife, that's enough. It's more than enough. Fish in another pond. Fish in another university. You have a master's in engineering. Try something else. Are we together? You must, your reach, your reach. Uh, I'm so glad with what the team and Dream and his team have introduced in the new service format. Who, who's liking the new service format? So we're trying to expand our reach. We're trying to expand our reach in so many things. We're trying to move into different fields and scopes and ideas. And finally, brethren, finally, uh, second finally, grow your research. Grow your research, not just due diligence, but grow your research. 
Don't take stuff at face value. Get at least two or three collaborators, especially with business. There's a friend I met in Zambia that lost $2.5 million because they didn't complete their research on an individual and made the mistake of paying cash for something that was not given. It was cash for no product. So what they've now done is, what they've now done is, is like cash goes into a reliable bank, uh, something that is Jurassic Park in this part of the world. Uh, cash goes into a reliable bank in a trust holding. It sits there. And so Tawanda buys my product. His cash is sitting here. I then send my product. When Tawanda gets my product, the bank or the trust or the instrument then releases the money minus their interest and minus their service for that particular entity. So what I'm driving at here is uh, uh, th there's money to be made as a middle person. Do your research. A, a friend of ours bought gold in DRC and paid $50 million. They saw the product being loaded on the plane. When the plane was moving, taxing on the runway to go, they released the money. They saw the plane take off. Their people waited for the plane. When it landed, the plane was full of air. So what had happened was, as these guys came here, they learned later on that the plane with the gold remained on the ground. They had another one that looked like the plane that took off exactly. They go to a church called Crooks for Christ. <laughs> That's why that syndicate led by a friend of ours in Canada said they will not do business in Africa because of stuff like that. So what they're doing now is they are getting into the plane and they are chaining themselves on the boxes. <laughs> Do your research, and there's so much there, and then grow in your in your holiday making and recreation. Take a holiday, take a break. Ask your neighbors, say, do you own a swimming costume? <laughs> and here, Alice, do you own a swimming costume? The rains are coming. You have to Bugucha. <laughs> Helen, do you own a pair of shorts? Ah, you know, teach you, I, uh... Uh, I, I'm trying to look for an example here. I'd rather not. <laughs> the point is that you have to take time to rest. We are now in the holiday season. Some people need to work, you've got to work. Hospitals need to function, gas stations need to function, the bakeries, the supermarkets. We thank God for those people. They are making life easy for a lot of us. Hopefully they can take a break in the not so season time. But for those of you that are working full-time jobs and you're taking a break, don't take on another job because the holiday money is good unless you really need it. But take a break. Turn to your neighbor and say, give me a break. If you're, sitting, if you're sitting next to your boss, say, give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. There we go. Sun and sand. Take a break. Bushman, what's Bushman item? Bushman Rock is a really nice vacation area. They have nice chalets, their food is absolutely amazing. They have, they have giraffes, Z-E-B-R-A, giraffe, that's zebra. They have crocodiles, they have, huh? Yeah, they've got all that right here. Their food is amazing. Take a drive right here, this place here, Haku, Haka. Ah, China. 
Yeah, go, they got bright places there. If you go early, you can get a nice spot overlooking where the animals are, and you can have a nice cup braai there. If you're a vegetarian, just turn your onions and your potatoes over. Doesn't matter. It's a getaway. It's a getaway. Don't have a, a braai by a lay-by. Don't do that. Make sure that you're going somewhere. Mazowie is a great, great venue. Chich and I drove there the other day. The dam is amazing. The water's clean. They got all kinds of sporting events there, boating, uh, swimming, uh, badminton, tennis, etc., etc. Uh, also, there's a lot of firing there, but you won't be there. You'll be praying for those that have designated drivers and so on. But take a break. If you're sitting next to your husband, say, give me a break. <laughs> if you're sitting next to your wife, say, honey, give me a break. Tell him, tell him, say, give me a break. How many of you are, how many of you here are just tired of washing pots this year? You are tired of washing plates. It's only women raising their hands. Shout, my blessing is growing. Shout, my blessing is growing. Stand up and shout, my blessing is growing. Father, we thank you for 2023, for growing us in blessing, for growing us in every way. We are more blessed now than we were at the beginning of the year. Grow us in blessing. Increase my levels of responsibility. Increase my reputation, my reserves, my track record. Help me with my record keeping to be more diligent. Expand my rank, anoint me with greater rank. Give me true riches of wisdom and knowledge and strength. Give me cash flows of revenue so my businesses can expand. Thank you for revelation knowledge and let my reach reach people I never thought I would reach. I pray that you'll help me with research for my new product and my new company. And Father, thank you for the season of a break. In Jesus' name.